Hello and welcome to our first live actually of ADHD Awareness Month. You've got Stephanie from the ADHD Advocate and um, Eleni. I'm Eleni from the ADHD Advocate here in New York. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. It's going to be a really busy month. We've got some quite ambitious plans, but it's very much needed. So we're delighted that you can come and join us. Eleni and I have been doing lives every week on a Monday actually on Facebook, but we thought it'd be time to move it across to LinkedIn. So, because we want to really make an impact this year, don't we? Absolutely. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to be giving you some tips and some information and some resources that you can use to support yourself or those around you uh, with ADHD. And um, our theme is really um, interdependence, not independence. And for ADHD, this is a, a huge distinction, actually. Um, right, Steph? A massive distinction. Uh, what we always we talk about is that it's really important that body double strategy, which is the key strategy for ADHDs. The problem, though, it being such a key strategy, the message that we get um, from a very early age in education is you need to be independent. Why can't you do this yourself? Do this yourself. You know, stop asking. You know, me, other people. You've got to be independent. So that message really gets in our way. 100% and recognizing now that um, even from just a few years ago, there are so many more, so much more awareness about ADHD, starting, of course, first and, for, first and foremost with ADHD Awareness Month that we can signpost you to and you can lean into to really make a huge difference in how you recognize and support ADHD, which is the first step of, of this journey and to really looking at ADHD through what we like to say is the ADHD lens, because that, that shift in perspective is really the beginning. Yeah, it's so important. And that's the thing when, you know, we need support, but the support is only going to be as good as the ADHD lens is in terms of if it's a parent supporting a child, a teacher supporting a student, it's really important for an ADHD to be understood because that lack of understanding, that's what leads to the frustration, to anger, particularly in schools, we see it. The ADHD really wants to learn, um, maybe is using dominant processing styles like verbal processing, maybe moving around a little bit, but then they do so and they get a detention. And so here they are trying to engage in the way that they can, the only way they can, and they're getting penalized for it. So it doesn't send a very good message and it's not setting up our ADHDs for success. So hopefully this month, we're going to bust a few myths, myths, do a lot of educating, obviously here via LinkedIn, Facebook, we've got uh, Instagram. Uh, we've created a new sister company called the ADHD Academy. And we're going to be trying to offer support to university students to start with and high school students. A lot, I just really want to get the message across, but also very much in the vein of interdependence, not independence. Absolutely. So um, yeah, it's really important. But Eleni, did you want to talk about the kind of support teams that ADHDs need in place to thrive? Absolutely. And uh, what we've seen in coaching is when many individuals reach out to us for uh, parent education or coaching, and we begin, and a lot of time parents will recognize that the symptoms that they've identified in their child are very much ones that they've possessed, but really maybe never thought about or recognized or put all the pieces together. So we do tend to see a lot of adults that um, seek their own diagnoses after recognizing that their child does have an ADHD diagnosis. So that too is a significant step in recognizing what kind of a support team that you need around you. Um, and I think Steph would agree first and foremost is to work with a qualified medical professional to accurately diagnose and discuss with them how you would like to support your ADHD uh, medically, whether that would involve um, taking medication or other options. That is a very personal choice we recognize, but certainly a very important component of supporting ADHD. Yeah, it's um, and, and the thing is as well, not all, all psychiatrists are created equal, not all ADHD coaches are created equal. It's important to do your homework, better yet to get recommendations, referrals, 
because even with you know in medicine and with psychiatry the level uh, amount of adhd knowledge is certainly not not equal and that was one of the first things that adcar the add coaching academy that uh, trained us adhd coaches up uh told us that uh when we finished our course they said congratulations you now know more than 90 percent i think it was 90 percent of you know psychiatrists that assess adhd and to me that was like absolutely shocking yeah, it certainly is shocking. And even I think since we began coaching staff, we've made so much more progress in recognizing um, ADHD related symptoms and um, recognizing that they do have a unique way that can be supported. And we've really made great strides in that in that area. Um, so besides you're a medical professional, certainly um, coaching can massively help you um, in whatever challenges you find yourself up against, whether they're personal, family, professional, um, really every ADHD doesn't doesn't stay in one place. So you're going to see challenges that are going to be uh, coming up across your life and in many different um, areas, I would argue. So certainly coaching can address the root cause, uh, the root symptom, which is getting in your way. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely pervasive. And many ADHDers that come to us for coaching, they really, there's so many blind spots. Um, ADHDers feel that they know certain things or do certain things, but in coaching, it is like kind of holding up a mirror um, to an ADHD in terms of really kind of helping them get perspective and getting clear about what might be actually going, you know, going on that's preventing them from reaching their goals. And, and often it is a narrative. You know, there really is a very strong power in the language that we use, what we tell ourselves. And I think that's one of the um, huge impacts of coaching is to be able to kind of echo that back or rather mirror that back to ADHDs so they can start doing something about shifting that narrative because that at the end of the day, I would say, um, is, is the key really to beginning that transformation from understanding your ADHD, accepting your ADHD needs, but then also we help you discover what your strengths are, right? And give yourself permission to lean into those strengths and redesign your life around your ADHD, because that is the only way we've seen that an ADHD is gonna thrive. And, uh, and there's so many gifts ADHDs have to, to offer. 100% staff. And it takes time, that shift, because whether you're uh, a parent or a student or um, somebody in a professional setting that has been used to doing things a certain way for a really long time, um, it takes a, a, a big push, a, a gradual shift over time, I should say, to really change the way you think and you address and you approach and prepare. And this is where coaching can really support you um, in that journey, um, especially for students. We've seen students, um, maybe there is support as you're working, collaborating with your child's schools to put a plan in place. And as they get a bit older, um, their needs shift. And certainly we can, we do help support students in that transition. Yeah, and we're, we're really excited uh, towards uh, well, the beginning, no, the middle of this month. We're going to be featuring at the TES SEN show uh, that's down at the Business Design Center in Islington. Very excited to be able to uh, speak amongst teachers and SENCOs to hopefully help them look through that ADHD lens and, and slowly but surely try and shift the message in education from independence to interdependence. Because whilst this message of independence, whilst that prevails, we're just ADHDs are just not, or well, one, obviously, not going to get the support that they need because to do so would be against being independent. So if you're encouraged to not seek support, then you're not going to seek it. And that is not what ADHDs need. We, we need to be able to ask for the help that we need. Again, there are some areas that we're absolutely amazing in, but with those other areas that get in our way and always will um it, the it, the quicker we can just ask for help um or delegate outsource that particular area after education then the sooner we can access our strengths and operate in our areas of unique brilliance which is definitely what we at the adhd advocate are always encouraging and helping our clients uh achieve going towards that those kind of um those kind of goals so we're really excited that you can be here with us, uh, kicking off ADC Awareness Month here on LinkedIn. And uh, do join us tomorrow. We've got one of our uh, therapists that have just joined ADC Advocate, Dr. Vic Patel. Uh, he's a specialist in dialectical uh, behavioral therapy, and he is going to be speaking about the importance of regulating emotions when you have ADHD. So that's gonna be really informative, very helpful. So do join us tomorrow.
Yes, please do. And every day this month for a really manageable, hopefully, uh, bit of information and support that you can lean into uh, for ADHD Awareness Month. Yeah, and uh, just before we go to just finish it off, uh, on the 30th and the 31st, we will be holding the UK's first ever coaching, ADHD coaching summit online. Very exciting, very historical, and very excited to announce that we will have ADCA's own David Gawak opening that up for us, kind of father of ADHD coaching, really. Uh, the train that you know created ADCA and where we trained at all those years ago. So we are very excited, very honored to have him open up the summit and that will be on the 30th of October at 4 p.m. Details for that will follow. But otherwise, we look forward to seeing